Sir Ernest Shackleton was one of the great explorers of the early 20th century and he was the last of the heroic age of exploration. Shackleton um, was no newcomer to the Antarctic. His first trip there was on the Discovery Expedition with Sir Robert Falcon Scott. Um, he then led his own expedition to the Antarctic, the Nimrod Expedition, in 1907, when he reached the furthest south that any man had reached. In 1914, he led another expedition, which was seeking to cross the Antarctic from coast to coast via the South Pole. That expedition actually became more famous because the vessel, the Endurance, became trapped in the ice and was crushed. The crew had to escape from it in the lifeboats and from there Shackleton then led an incredible voyage in an, a lifeboat 720 miles across the South Antarctic seas. I'm Helene Hewitt, I'm a Science Fellow at the Met Office. The Antarctic continent is 40 million kilometres squared, which is about twice the size of Australia. It's the coldest, the windiest and the driest place on Earth. The coldest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica is minus 89 degrees Celsius. Antarctica is covered in the world's largest ice sheet. The ice sheet contains 60% of the world's total fresh water. The sheer scale is staggering and even moves Shackleton to write poetry. To the great ice barrier, this year shall your icy fastness resound with the voices of men. Shall we learn that you come from the mountains Shall we call you a frozen sea? Shall we sail northward and leave you, still a secret forever to be? Shackleton departed on his last voyage in September 1921. Um, at this point, he was 46 and still very much at the height of his powers as an explorer and as an organiser of scientific expeditions. His ideas were to further scientific knowledge, so he took a biologist with him, a meteorologist. The Quest expedition departed with 20 crew on board, many of them were previous shipmates, um, so his second in command, his captain. The ship itself was something of a disappointment. Um, it was really underpowered for the voyage. It wasn't designed to undertake long sea voyages. What was interesting about it was that it was designated as a meteorological observing ship and that meant that the, the Met Office, as, as part of the Air Ministry, loaned Shackleton's expedition a range of meteorological observing instruments, so barometers, thermometers and other pieces of equipment to enable them to essentially run a meteorological observing station at sea um, and they collected about 2,000 sets of ob observations from the voyage. The Met Office actually owns the ship logs that were created during the Quest expedition. They're actually stored at the Scott Polar Research Institute. The logs contain a range of information including wind direction and force and more handwritten observations on things like uh, the state of the ice, whether it was loose ice, pack ice. The Southern Ocean is covered by sea ice seasonally. It grows in the Southern Hemisphere winter and melts in the Southern Hemisphere summer. The records from Shackleton's era are so important because they allow us to see whether the changes we are seeing now are unusual, particularly with the sea ice. On one of his trips, the Endurance was trapped in the sea ice in the Weddell Sea for 10 months. And those observations have allowed scientists to estimate whether sea ice has changed dramatically in the last 100 years or so. The Antarctic ice sheet is believed to have lost mass. However, we don't know what will happen to it in the future. Because it contains a large amount of ice, 
if a lot of that were to melt, it would have a big impact on sea level rise. Paradoxically, we will experience greater impacts in the Northern Hemisphere in the UK from a melting Antarctic ice sheet than would be experienced in the Southern Hemisphere. And this is linked to the gravitational effects of the ice sheet. Shackleton's initial plan had been to stop off at South Georgia on his way down to the pack ice to pick up additional equipment and to do some more work on the ship's engine, which was never quite right. A few weeks previously, he had been feeling unwell and his second in command, Frank Wilde, commented that he wasn't himself, he was quiet, and he'd actually started drinking champagne for breakfast in order to deaden the pain. Um, it's believed that he'd suffered a heart attack. When the ship arrived at South Georgia, um, after another stormy journey, they'd had to cancel their Christmas celebrations because it was uh, um, hurricane force seas. Um, they arrived on the 4th of January and Shackleton kept, went off the boat, went to visit the, the whaling community, came back apparently refreshed um, and stating that the next day they would have their Christmas celebrations. Um, but overnight, unfortunately, Shackleton suffered a major heart attack and died around about two in the morning on the 5th of January 1922. Shackleton's crewmates immediately started work to transport his body back to England, but they received a uh, communication from Emily Shackleton, his wife, noting that she would like him to be buried on South Georgia at the site of perhaps his most heroic exploit when they were trapped on Elephant Island. I think perhaps fitting that that is where you know the, this great heroic explorer you know, whose story is really about South Georgia, it's perhaps fitting that that's where he now lies. The records from Shackleton's era are so important because they allow us to see whether the changes we are seeing now are unusual and how they compare with uh, conditions in Antarctica um, over a hundred years ago. Shackleton's lasting legacy is as one of uh, the world's great explorers. He came 11th in the list of 100th Greatest Britons recently, and one of his contemporaries, a fellow Antarctic explorer, when speaking about him at a conference in 1956, gave the wonderful quote, Scott for scientific method, Amazon for speed and efficiency, but when disaster strikes and all hope is gone, get down on your knees and pray for Shackleton. I think that, you know, that legacy of him as a great explorer um, and somebody who could just rescue things from the jaws of disaster is, is what makes him so well known today. Mm -hmm.